Thanks, John, and, and, and thanks um, to The Economist and thanks to the organizer of this event for, for inviting me. It's a, quite a privilege to be with all of you today. Um, it, is my, it is also a pleasure to be back in Athens. Last time I was here, I, I had the opportunity to witness in action the working group that was actually drafting the debt settlement and second chance um, law, what then could become, uh, which for the simplicity, uh, uh, for, for the sake of simplicity today, I'll call just the new Greek insolvency code. So I'll use these five minutes to just uh, uh, try to address t three topics. Um, the first one is um, hopefully preaching to the core the importance of the restructuring and insolvency system for both the financial sector and the private sector. The second topic is uh, related to uh, the trends that we can see in restructuring and insolvency and how the reform that Greece made fits into that context. And third, um, I will just mention some of the challenges ahead. So let me begin by saying that um, an, an, an effective insolvency system is absolutely critical for financial stability, for MPL resolution, and the function that the insolvency system plays in the economy of distinguishing those viable, even though financially distressed companies, uh, between those firms and, that can still be saved and those that are unviable and should exit the market, and those assets be reallocated back to the productive activities in the economy, is an absolutely critical function. Um, for the private sector, it is also important to ensure an, a robust insolvency system to ensure that uh, employment can be preserved. Um, and of course, to uh, strengthen the investment clim climate as well. Which brings me to the latest trends. Um, as you may know, um, the World Bank Group is a standard setter uh, in insolvency designated by the Financial Stability Board. And um, I, I've been basically dedicating the last 15 years of my life with the World Bank, uh, helping countries implement insolvency systems. And as such, I think we are very uniquely positioned to know what, what, what the, the main trends are. And in that context, I think um, the Greek implementation, as, as Julia was actually saying uh, right before me, the Greek implementation of the European Directive uh, from 2019 has been really an excellent step um, towards uh, that harmonization that Europe is going to. When you look at the, at the law, at the new Greek insolvency code, it, it really has all the elements in good, uh, that you would call international good practice. It has a workout system, it has a discharge and fresh start uh, system, and of course it has a, um, um, a, 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 a pre-insolvency proceeding, which is the main purpose of the European Directive, try to encourage early findings, right? Um, the elimination of the rehabilitation process, uh, to me, it was a, uh, something that raised some questions, the Article 99 and so on, but the reality is that um, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to listening to the next panel of the Greek experts, but, uh, but I think uh, it, it's worked out well here. Um, now, uh, the reality is that the law on paper is the law on paper, right? And, 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 and the implementation is absolutely critical, which brings me to um, the final point of the challenges ahead. The first one is a worldwide challenge. I'm not gonna talk about specifically the Greek market, but after the COVID pandemic and the lockdowns, and in the macroeconomic context that has been discussed today about high inflation, high interest rates, <laughs> difficulties to obtain finance for companies, let alone financially distressed companies. All of this is clearly contributing to a buildup of, 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 of distress in the real sector. And sometimes you, one can see the MPLs. The MPLs are, are very important, clearly, but they are not the only sign that one needs to look at because sometimes they get out of the financial system, but the debt is still in the, system, in the real sector and, and that needs to be resolved, right? Um, the second challenge, and, and, and I will just mention two more in the interest of time. So the second challenge is related to the micro and small enterprises. And this is something that um, when I was looking at the numbers in Greece is 98.9% .9 are micro and small companies. And I think something needs to be done in particular on the insolvency system. If you look at the trends on this particular point, um, US enacted a subchapter five, tomorrow the new Spanish law 
um, comes into force, dealing with a specific process for micro and small enterprises. At the World Bank, we've been working on that since uh, I led the report in 2017, looking at this topic, and, and we culminated that with the new World Bank principles last year on trying to establish some sort of simplified mechanism. Delegating micro and small enterprise insolvencies to lower court judges generally doesn't work. And I, I don't know how it's working in Greece, but it is, as Julia was saying before, the judicial system, particularly on the lower courts, are under-resourced and overwhelmed, and they are not specialized. Um, so I don't know how that's uh, working here. And the final challenge, and with this I finish, is the implementation of the law. And of course, for any system to work well, it is essential to have a cadre of well-trained, adequately supervised, well-remunerated insolvency administrators. Um, the same with judges, specialized judges. Any functioning system of insolvency needs specialized judges. And the business community, legal community, and banking community need to understand the, the benefits of having a robust insolvency process. With this, I finish. Thank you.